Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. In this video I am making a camping cake. So I'm starting with my cake layers. These are chocolate cakes that have an Oreo cookie crust that are filled with an Oreo cream center. So this buttercream is just vanilla buttercream but I did scrape up the middle of about a row to two rows of Oreos and put that in the filling to kind of make it look like a cookie. So I have kind of my crust on the outside and my filling on the inside to really kind of bring home that Oreo theme. Now that I filled in my gap, it's time for the crumb coat. So again, the crumb coat is just a coat of frosting on the outside of your cake to make sure that you're locking the crumbs with the cake. And so this cake is gonna be really rustic as a camping cake. So this step is kind of optional because any crumbs on the outside would just add to that rustic look. I, however, wanted more of a smooth look to my cake, so I was gonna opt for a crumb coat first and then a final coat after my crumb coat was nice and chilled. As I say, for a crumb coat, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to be even. You'll see that there is some white buttercream kind of peeking through my layers. Again, I'm not gonna worry about that because this just needs to cover the cake. And so I'm just gonna do a couple of passes, make sure that my cake is completely covered. Also scraping down the top to make sure I don't have any edges. I want my, my top to be nice and flat so I can have a flat cake. Once it's coated, it's gonna go into the fridge for about five minutes or so until all the frosting is set and it can touch it without um, any frosting coming off. And now it's time for my final coat. I'm gonna repeat the exact same process starting with the top of my cake and just getting that nice and flat and then moving on to the sides of my cake. I'm using a chocolate frosting here that I have mixed. It's vanilla frosting that I add um, melted chocolate, like chocolate ganache to, and also a bit of cocoa powder to get a nice deep chocolatey flavor. And as you can see, some of those dark pieces are actually whole pieces of chocolate. So my chocolate didn't melt down all the way. And so when I added it to my frosting, it just solidified back into um, a little bit of a mass. So those you could leave in or take out. I decided to take most of them out. Um, there are, though there are a couple left in the cake because again, this cake has a cookie crust. It's not really gonna be that noticeable. And who doesn't like a burst of chocolate in your cake? So um, kind of optional if it happens to you, if you want to take them out or leave them. For this cake, I decided to take a couple of them out so I can get a nice, again, a nice smooth edge on my cake. To get a nice smooth cake, I'm going back and filling any air pockets with more frosting and then using my bench scraper to scrape away any excess frosting. And so you can see I have a couple more gaps at the top of my cake. I'm gonna go back and fill those with more buttercream. I'm also going to use my spatula, offset spatula, to level off my cake to have a nice flat edge. Again, as this cake is a rustic look, this rustic edge actually would have looked really nice. And so um, it would have also held in the cookie crumbs. So if you were making a camping cake and you have all this top edging here, you could definitely leave that and just kind of create more of like, um, kind of a canyony feel or like a, um, I don't know, a homey rustic feel with uh, your cake but I again decided to have a nice flat edge. I think my cake is looking pretty good, so I'm gonna do one more pass and do a couple more filling of air holes and then do one more pass with my vent scraper. If you're finding that your cakes are not smoothing out as much as you would like to, you can always warm up your tools using boiling water or even a blowtorch and then um, uh, do a swipe with your vent scraper or your palette knife. That actually will help kind of slightly melt the outside of your frosting to give it a nice smooth look. I thought this was okay. Again, this is a camping cake. It is gonna be kind of rustic, but I think the like little bit of uh, marbling that's happening with the white buttercream peeking through um, and a little bit of dark shading, I think it's all kind of perfect. So flattening out my top and moving on. I'm using some extra buttercream, again, chocolate buttercream, to just kind of create a tiny bit of a mound in the middle of my cake to hold my crumbs onto you. So one, I don't have to have as many cookie crumbs, and two, it's actually gonna solidify them to my cake. My biggest fear here is that I'm gonna deliver the cake and or I'm gonna be delivering the cake, I'm gonna hit a stop sign or a stoplight and the crumbs are gonna be flying off the cake. So by using a little bit of buttercream, I'm ensuring that the cookie crumbs are going to stay on the cake. I'm also leaving a bit of a border between um, the edge of the cake and where the crumbs start, just so that nothing is really pouring over the side and kind of messing up my smooth edge. And because some of my crumbs had fallen over the side, I decided to add a bit of a dirt border to the bottom, um, as you'll see here in a little bit, just to kind of, again, tie in the theming, but also cover up some of the crumbs at the bottom of the cake. And again, um, cake decorating is all about improvising, and so I thought this actually made it look pretty cute. So. Um, you can also take this a step further and actually cover the entire board. That's totally up to you. I thought that this nice thin border was enough. And then to make sure it's not gonna make a complete mess, I took a, um, I think it's a boar head brush or like a boar bristle brush, it's a pastry brush, and just kind of knocked off any loose crumbs. This just ensures I'm not going to make a mess when the person cuts into the cake. And now for the final touch, you wanna just go back and wipe up any extra frosting using a paper towel. 
decoration time, I am using some candy melts and some um, pretzels to make some trees. This is pre candy melts that have been melted down, dyed kind of a mossy green color. As you can see, I'm just kind of going back and forth in a straight kind of diagonally pattern, really, really random and just uh, making a tree type of shape. I am putting a lot of chocolate though over the, um, the pretzel to make sure that this actually adheres to the pretzel. When using candy melts, just keep in mind that these do solidify pretty quickly. This is probably about five minutes, and as you see kind of here toward the end of this um, this tree, I had a very hard time getting it out of the piping bag, so move pretty quickly. Next up is a fireplace or a campfire. For this, I'm using brown candy melts to kind of set my base and kind of put my sticks in, my sticks or pretzels, in a circular-ish pattern with some jagged edges because it's, it's a campfire. And then I first started by drizzling out some more candy melts on top. I felt that was kind of messy and it was just really kind of glossy and it wasn't really doing much. So I decided about halfway through to switch up and instead dip my pretzels um, about halfway into my uh, chocolate so then I could um, place them more strategically for the top to give me a kind of round-ish shape of a campfire. Again, all of this is really rustic, so just kind of move things around and place them as you need until you find a decent enough pattern. It was kind of circular, it was looking decent, so I decided to coat it with a little more chocolate just to keep it all in place, make it kind of look barky, and then we're going to move on to our fire. I pipe circles for embers, and then I make my flames by piping a circle and then dragging that candy melt upwards to make a squiggle. And I'm making these fairly thick because I want these to stand up. I'm also making two different sizes, like a long and a short, so that way I can kind of layer up my flames. All of this can be done also using different colors like yellow and orange to give you some more dimension to your fire. And next up is my little tent. For my tent, I took a graham cracker, snapped it in half, coated the top halves in chocolate, and then pressed them together to put them in the fridge to set. Really simple. And now it's time to put my fire together. I started with my embers, so using extra red chocolate to um, stick my embers down, and then I'm going to kind of pull up my flames and attach them with more candy melts. To give my fire more shape, I learned that I should put the molded side outward, so when you pull up your candy melt, there's going to be a flat side and there's going to be kind of a bumpy side. Um, as you can see here, I'm now turning all of my flames around. I wanted the, the bumpy side to be outward, again, to give it a little more dimension. Um, if your flame is only going to be viewed from one way, you could just do this um, on the side of the cake that needs it. I made my fire 3D, so I did the bumpy side, used the bumpy side all the way around to make a circle of large flames first, and then I stepped back and added my tiny flame in between the large flames, so again, just give it a little more dimension. Um, you could make your fire as large and as detailed as you want. I think I honestly could have just done one row at the front where I wanted my front of my fire, my campfire to be, and been fine. Um, but I think this just looked really cute and pretty realistic ish, um, realistic enough really, um, and I think it worked out really well. So now with my fire done, again you want to let everything set and make sure that everything is nice and set before you put it on your cake, but now it's time to decorate. I bought a banner off of Etsy for the, um, the kid's name, so I'm making a, camping, a birthday cake, um, and so I want to place that first, and so his name is Nathan, so I want to place him in the center, make sure that his he's nice and centered, and then form all the decorations around it. I'm starting with my tree since they are kind of forming the background of my cake, and then I'm going to move on to my tent and then my campfire. For extra security, I'm actually securing my trees and all of my decorations with candy melts, so I'm dipping my tree into my candy melts, pushing it into my cake, and then covering the red candy melts with, um, with Oreo crumbs. If you used a brown chocolate or a brown candy melt, you wouldn't have to cover it, I don't think, um, but mine was just really obvious because I was using the leftover red that I had. So I placed my fireplace, my campfire, and my tent. Now time to secure it. So I put my tent in. I'm gonna move really quickly again because these candy melts set so quickly. And I'm just gonna try to cover up a lot of that red with Oreo crumbs. This cake is gonna be viewed from one side. And so I'm not going too heavy at the back, but just enough to make it look kind of natural. Um, this tree is giving me a lot of trouble. So I had to, kept, I had to keep redipping it. Finally, I said, you're done. I pulled it out. Um, but I'm gonna place my fire, add a couple more trees, and then I'm going to give it a spin and it's done. This is honestly such a cute cake and I'm so glad I got to share this with you guys. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. It means quite a bit to me. So if you like this video or you wanna see more of my content, you guys know what to do. I plan on posting videos every second and fourth Friday. So hope to see you guys in the next video.